So this is integer exponents part two. Uh, I just wanted to make a separate video just to go over more examples. So uh, hopefully this concept is very clear. So the first example I'm gonna go through is right here. Um, we have negative five, x to the power of negative three, y to the power of negative two. So any exponent with a negative or any negative exponent will basically flip that value, the base, if it's x or y, which have the negative exponent, a negative exponent to the bottom of a fraction. So we have, what I usually do is I make a fraction. Anything without a negative exponent stays on top, which is negative five. Some students make a mistake. They look at negative five and they say, oh, it's negative. So it must go to the bottom of a fraction, but that's not true because negative five doesn't have an exponent. It doesn't have a negative exponent to flip it. It's just negative five. It's just a coefficient. It's just a coefficient is a value. Whereas X and Y, which both have negative exponents go to the bottom and the exponents become positive. So the answer becomes negative five over X cubed Y squared. Okay, let's go to the next example here. Now this I have in brackets. I don't have any variables this time. This is just dealing with numbers, constants as we call them. So three to the negative two on the top, four to the power of three on the bottom and a power of negative three on the outside. What I would do first is I would probably apply this exponent on the outside into the brackets. Well, it's up to you. We could do inside the brackets first because that's typically what we've done for bed mass. So I'll do that first. So again, inside the brackets, on the top, I'll actually be left with just one because the three squared will go to the bottom. And then the four cubed also goes to the bottom. And then I have a power of negative three outside. Now that power of negative three will apply for everything inside the brackets. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because there's lots of things inside the brackets. Why is there one on top? Because when I take the three to the negative two in the bottom, what's left with on top is, is just a one. It's a value of one. I've divided it out. So when I apply the negative three into everything, I get one to the power of negative three over three. And what happens with the exponent to the exponent? Remember they multiply. So I multiply negative three times two, which is negative six and four, again, three times negative three, I multiply the exponents. That ends up being negative nine. One to the power of anything is just one. So that's gonna stay one. Now notice now, again, these things on the, these values on the bottom have negative exponents. So they're not gonna flip to the bottom. Now they're gonna flip to the top. So if they're on the bottom and they're negative exponents, they flip to the top. If they're on the top and they have negative exponents then they flip to the bottom. So this time they flip to the top. The one, like I said, is just one. And then everything on the top is gonna to be multiplied by each other. So we don't actually need to write the one because it will be just multiplied by the rest of the stuff. So three to the power of six, and oh, so that's a four, looks like a Y. Four to the power of nine, and I have nothing on the bottom. So that is actually my final answer. That's it. Okay, let's go up to question three here. There's a lot going on in this one. So let's see if I have any common bases with exponents that I can either add if it's being multiplied or subtract if it's being divided. So I see two common bases right at the beginning, two and two. Those bases are being divided, so we subtract the exponents. The top exponent is negative three minus the bottom exponent, which is a six. If it was a negative six, then I would put the negative there and that would change the, change the value. So negative three minus six is negative nine. So I get a value of two to the power of negative nine. And then I look, I see, oh, five. Fives are common too, those are common bases. So I subtract the exponents again. So the exponent on the top is a two minus the exponent on the bottom, which is a negative one. That is very different. Two minus negative one is different than two minus one. Because two minus negative, remember these two negatives become a just a big giant plus, and I end up with three. So I get five to the power of three. So as a final answer for this one, um, look at the exponents, which one's negative. So which one's gonna flip either to the bottom or the top? In this case, it's gonna flip to the bottom because it's on the quote unquote top. So I write my fraction, the positive exponents are gonna stay on the top because they are not changing. And the negative exponent of nine goes to the bottom. If this was an exponent of negative nine on the bottom, it would flip to the top. Okay, so this is my final answer. And most of the time these questions won't say evaluate, they'll just say simplify, which means you, you leave it as in that form. Okay, question four. 
Okay, I have a lot going on here. I'm multiplying. So with the values, the coefficients, because they don't have any exponent, because they're not similar, I can just multiply them together. So two times three is six. The x's are common. They have their like terms. So I'm multiplying, so I add the exponents. So two plus negative one. And two plus negative one is one. So I get x to the power of one, or just x. If it's a power of one, we don't have to write it. And for the y's, the, the exponent on this y, it's not written, but we always assume it's a one. If it's not written, it's a one. <clears throat> so y to the power of one times y to the power of zero. Add the exponents. One plus zero is just one. So I, again, I don't have to write the exponent of one if it's just implied. So my final answer is six x y. Okay, question five here. So I have stuff on the bottom, stuff on the top. Um, we would look at like, what are the like terms? I have a bunch, I have m's, three m's and three n's. If they're being divided, I'm, I subtract the exponents. If they're being multiplied, I add. So I'm actually gonna deal with the bottom first because then I can add those exponents together. So the top is gonna stay the same. m4, n to the negative one over. Now these m's, I add the exponent. The first m has an exponent of one. Second m exponent of 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. And the n's, I have an n cubed and an n cubed. So the, on the bottom, I get n to the power of 6. Now I can actually, now I can uh, simplify further by subtracting the exponents because now I have variables on the top and the bottom. They're being divided. So now I subtract the exponents. So m to the power of 4 minus 3, which is 1. Again, I don't have to write that. And n, you might want to write this one out, minus 1, or negative 1. And then I subtract the exponent of 6 on the bottom. That ends up being negative 7. So I get m, and then n to the power of negative 7. We're going to simplify this, so I'm going to flip whatever is a negative, either to the top, bottom or to the top. This time it goes to the bottom, because it's on the top. And I get m over n to the power of 7. And that is my final answer. Question six, this is the last one, last one I'm gonna go through. So I got a bunch of stuff inside. I'm gonna do that first before I apply the exponent of two. Six over four don't divide evenly, but I can simplify them. Six over four reduces to three over two. Okay, divide both of them by two. The M on the top is an exponent of one. The M on the bottom is an exponent of two. So I subtract one minus two, which is negative one. So I get m to the power of negative one. Now, if you want to write this all as a, like in a fraction, I guess you'd write three over two, m to the negative one on the top, and then n, two minus one is just one, so n to the one or just n. Sorry, let me, so m to the negative one, n, and that's still all to the power of two. <clears throat> so the only one that flips is this one because it has a negative exponent. Because it's on the top, it's going to flip to the bottom. So I'm gonna do that right now. So the m to the negative one is going to flip to the bottom and just become m. And on the top, I still have that n. And the exponent of two, remember, it applies to everything inside the brackets. So to the three, the n, I'll write it out. So I would have three squared, n, those exponents multiply, so n squared because one times two is two. On the bottom, I get two squared because the exponent applies to the number as an exponent. It doesn't multiply with the number. It, it applies to the number as an exponent. And remember, even when I'm multiplying exponents, I'm multiplying the exponents. I'm not multiplying the number. I'm not saying n times two, right? This isn't n times two. This is n to the power of one. And this exponent multiplies with that exponent. So on the bottom, I get m. Remember, this is a power of one. One times two is m squared. So if I was to evaluate this a bit further, I would say nine n squared over four m squared and nine and four have nothing in common. So that would be my final answer. Hopefully this helps to give a bit more explanation on section uh, 4.2 with exponents. Integer exponents are quite complicated. So if you have any questions, let me know.